From Longyearbyen, we are heading 42 nautical miles south to the Russian village Barentsburg. Svalbard, or Spitsbergen, became a full part of Norway after the Svalbard Treaty of 1920. But at the same time, the parties to the treaty, including Russia, were given the right of presence on the archipelago for exploitation of natural resources. Simply put, Russia can be here as long as it produces coal. And Barentsburg, and here it is, is, naturally, a mining community. This mine was the last of the three bought by the Soviet Union, and it is the last working one now. There are coal deposits in the depths of Olav Mountain, and Barentsburg is on its top. The port is exactly 264 steps away from the city. Actually, Russia has only 251 square kilometers of the archipelago. This area is 10 times smaller than Moscow, for example and most of these square kilometers are right here. So it can be said that Barentsburg is the capital of Russia on Svalbard. It doesn't look like the capital, of course, but it looks quite like Russia. And this is the central street of Barentsburg. Hello. And one, oops, feels like home at once. Oh, those roads. Here's the bypass. This settlement is the second largest after Longyearbyen. Its population is about 400 people, and most of them are miners and their families. Here, for example, Alia, Dasha, and Nastya, children of miners, are looking for rare polar flowers. Hi, and why aren't you at school? We have holidays now. Holidays? Yes, the summer holidays. Winter coats made me forget about the summer, but there is a superstition. When this inscription shows up out of snow, it's summertime, the polar night, retreats. During a polar night, you wake up every morning and you don't understand whether it is morning or night. Boys always are late for school and we go to school by bus. And why? Why do you go by bus? Because it's dark and they say a bear might attack you. Children are like the children of the world. They walk and miss the shorts and skirts, and they ask unchildish questions. What is communism? Well, it says here we are for, we are for communism. What is it? What are we for? But there is coal here. Coal is the greatest wealth of the ice archipelago. When Russia began developing these deposits in 1932, the only other coal mine Russia had was the Donbass. But now it is already clear that this Arctic coal is no bargain. Our mine is dangerous beyond categories. Methane hazard, coal mine bumps, mountain bumps. What does it mean? Well, this is a sign of underground pressure. Denis Sherba is a miner from Donbass, but for several years he has been responsible for coal mining on Spitsbergen. And why is it so high here? Well, because there are mountains here, hills. Local rocks are very sturdy, and although extraction is performed at relatively shallow depths, here is the entrance, so close, but... No, not allowed. We are not allowed into the mine categorically. Just since 1989, 47 miners died in these faces. Here it is, Denis, the result of your work. How many tons are there now? Approximately 60,000 tons. Semi-annual production. 120,000 tons. The amount seems huge, but in fact, it is three ten thousandth percent of Russia's annual production. And the fourth part of it remains here, in Barrettsburg, for local needs. Five times a year, the ship comes to take the rest. 
And here is an interesting feature. Because of the specific location of the mine, they move not the belt of the loader, but the ship itself. But this cargo is not very valuable. There is 4% of sulfur in polar coal, so it is not very good for carbonization, that is, as a fuel. And there isn't much left of it, according to calculations, until 2030. It depends on how we get it. You can get not 120,000, you can get less. Do not forget, Russia can be on this land while the miners are under this land. Hello. Hello. Can I shake your hand? It's dirty. A working hand. Here they are, real miners. And this, of course, is a Herculean task. I'm very dirty. That's okay. Of course, in half an hour I'll be fresh as a daisy. Of course, in half an hour I'll be fresh like a daisy. By the way, the shower in Barentsburg was a luxury until 1975. There it is, the city of Barentsburg, on the eastern side of the Grenfjord Gulf, clearly visible from here. Only one problem, they have found coal deposits here but not fresh water supply. There are no glaciers or lakes nearby. The solution was found here, on the western side. Here, three kilometers from the shore is the lake named Stem, and the water pipe is attached from here. At first, it goes by land, but then it goes down below water and covers another five kilometers along the bay bottom at 145 meters depth. But there is water in Barentsburg now. If there is plumbing, then there are plumbers. And of course, I will not miss a chance to get acquainted with the northernmost plumbers in Russia. Some one and a half hours walk on the water pipe, and you see a lonely house straight ahead. Oh, here they are at last, our heroes. Hello, people. Hello. I'm Sasha. Dimitri. Nice to meet you. Pavel. Well, what's it like to be a plumber in the Arctic? Fine. Pavel is from Ukraine. Dimitri is from the Vologda region. But for several years, they have been responsible for the proper functionality of the northernmost Russian water pipeline. This is the most basic thing. If something breaks, then there will be no life in Berensburg. There will be no water, no electricity. There will be nothing. And how does it work? Can you show me? Yes, Dima will show, and I have to go. Well, let's go to the pumping station on the lake. That is, everything starts there, yes? Yes. Lake Stem, which means singing lake in Norwegian, seems quite small, but its depth is more than 10 meters. It never freezes to the bottom, even in the polar winter. But in general, can you drink this water? Yes, you can drink directly from the lake. Pipe fitters check the pumping station every two hours. Water supply needs responsible care on a summer day and during polar night. And the plumber could use a gun, they say. Well, those are related costs. <laughs> you call polar bears related costs? There are four machines in the pumping station. All of them are past 40, so they are closely monitored. And if anything goes wrong, they are repaired. But failures are rare. And where is the main valve which turns the water in the entire Barentsburg on and off? Here it is, next to you. This one? Yes. Listen, so the life of some half a thousand people here in Arctic depends on this valve. Well, with some assumption, yes. To guarantee comfortable life there, these modest pipe fitters live here. Well, it's so cozy here, by the way. Warm. On working days and on holidays. Listen, you still have New Year's Eve here. Yes. Don't you take down the Christmas tree? I'm too lazy to take it down. <laughs> lazy to take it down? Well, it's okay. You have snow all around, even in June. Oh, Pavel, hello again. Hello. We have a New Year's Day all year round. <laughs> 
out of a sense of resistance and for entertainment, Pavel grows onions on the window and drinks hot tea now that there is a lot of water. They are the first consumers of their water supply. How do you survive here at all? Well, they bring food once a month. Either by helicopter or by water. Or by snowmobiles. Well, anyway, once a month we have communication with the world. This is it. The helicopter doesn't even stop the engine, unloads the groceries and flies away. And they stay all by themselves. Between the shifts on the pumping station, each of the hermits do their best now that modern technology has got even here. And getting out of here is not so easy. Well, the object cannot be left unattended. Get out of here. Well, we had a health screening in February. Then we have gone grocery shopping another few times. But you take turns, yes? One at a time? We take turns, of course, one at a time. We go on leave every other year. Well, I don't know. Some might think that it's hard here, but we got used to it. I don't know. I like it. I like it here. And there's no fuss, science, calmness. This is how Pavel and Dmitri live on the shore of a cold singing lake somewhere in the middle of the ice. 